Hello, welcome to the Impartial Theorists. Bring you the president. Question. You're fired. The first thing that we're going to talk about is Comey's book tour. Yeah, so Comey is back uh, in the media. He's, he's written a book, he's on tour, and he is pissing everybody off once again. Yeah. But also making everybody happy once again in some ways. He's being a walking, like, contradiction. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so, it's yeah. juicy. It's as juicy as pretty much everybody expected, and maybe yeah. even though... I don't believe anything some, he but says, But then there's though. a... Yeah. Then there's also just this really weirdness to it. Um, yeah. He's a fucking pretender. Like he's um he's manipulating the situation so much, and like uh, basically, his he released a book with with a bunch of shit from a memo that was redacted. And he provides an intimate look into Trump's like presidency before he was fired. There's a whole it's on the internet if you want to look it up you can look it up. And Trump basically restarted freaking out, saying the James the James Comey memo is just out and show clearly that there's no collusion and no obstruction. So he's basically saying James Comey's book and James Comey's, like, memos prove that he's right. Yeah, that yeah. they corroborate Trump's account of things. Which I don't think he read this shit, but... Yeah, um, but some interesting stuff to take away from it. I thought what was actually... Um, well, there's this ABC George Stephanopoulos interview that's oh, been... A lot of people are talking about that because he just says kind of a lot of stuff about Trump and uh, talks about the PP tapes. Uh, mm -hmm. Which, like, wh why? I mean, you know, I but yeah, and then he went on Colbert and, you know, I don't know, sometimes Colbert just kind of softballs it. Sometimes he, he goes, goes kind of hard. And I'd say he did, he hit some pretty, like, poignant points. Uh, like, he, because... He, Comey talks about how he likes to, or he operates in a world of norms and standards, but then it's like, he did some stuff that was not really the norms or standards, including like reopening the investigation days before the election. Um, he had not really dealt with it, the, with the Justice Department the way he should have. And then, but then he also, like, said that it was, like, kind of threw some shade on Loretta Lynch about this, like, mysterious document that people in the FBI have that would, like, yeah. sully her reputation. It's weird. He's trying to, he's... Yeah, there's some weird... So, yeah, like, and why even bring up the Loretta, Loretta Lynch thing? I don't know. It just seemed weird. There's a bunch of weird stuff in there. Um, yeah. And all his answers are kind of like, well, you just have to, like... You can argue with me, or, but that's how I see it, or like, that's my interpretation. And he also said that he is was operating in a world that Hillary Clinton would win, so like that's why he did that because it would be, like it would look, he was worried that it would like delegitimize her after the election. So I don't know, but it's just like it's hard to imagine because so, it's like if you were operating in that world, I don't know. The whole the whole shit is bullshit because both sides agree that the book doesn't say shit and that nobody or people didn't know already, and it's just a bunch of gossip, and it actually de delegitimizes Mueller's um, Mueller's possible like card of bringing Mueller bringing Comey out as a witness or like to question him. So now he's lost credibility in that too. So he's kind of just hurt, like, Mueller's probe a little bit. He took, at least he took one play out of the book. Yeah, sure yeah, I think I think that's true, but I think he basically, like, I heard, again, on the Colbert, uh, he responded to that, basically saying that, um, uh, he, that all his testimony had already been done, all his memos were already submitted, and so there wasn't really anything, like, fresh for him. Like, he was saying he was basically out of the investigation already. But then he did also admit that Mueller probably wouldn't like the fact that he was doing yeah. this. And he didn't talk to Mueller about it. Yeah. But apparently he did get approved by the FBI. The FBI had to, like, approve the entire book and everything. And yeah, to so make sure nothing that is redacted is in there. And that's why everything that we already know is the shit that's in the book. There's nothing new in the book. 
I think that's the FBI's. Yeah. The I mean, I guess you get like his perspective of the meetings he had with Trump yeah. is kind of like his. But he clearly has play bias. by play account of yeah. it. But and but his play by play could be doctored. That's another thing. He could make it. He could just make it so detailed that he can slip in the lies. Yeah, but Trump isn't really refuting any like specific thing of it. Yeah, because he probably but, doesn't remember. Yeah, he probably doesn't remember most of the shit. Like, do you remember what you did at two twenty p.m. last Monday? <laughs> if somebody who does changes a little bit of the shit in there, saying that you got to the bus stop to pick Ezra up at three ten instead of three, you would be like, "Yeah, I did." This, I don't, I don't just don't trust Comey. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, but on the other hand, the book is called A Higher Loyalty. That's what, like, and I've heard, I don't know, for example, on PBS NewsHour, David Brooks and Mark Shields talking about it. And they basically, they said they had read the book and they felt that he was truly a man of service and that, like, he did have a higher loyalty above politics. I don't think so. Because that Hillary shit that he pulled... And this fucking Loretta Lynch shit proves that he's still Republican. Like, yeah. Well, and then also Fox News like jumped on that Loretta Lynch stuff, and they've got a bunch of reports now that like, oh, there's this forthcoming report that is going to damage there's no Loretta Lynch. There's no forthcoming. Like, Comey just causes more trouble than he's worth, honestly. Well, yeah, and on the show he said that he couldn't talk about anything that was oh yeah that's almost worse like you say oh hey there's this document about you that's gonna ruin your reputation but But i can't tell you anything that it that's just gas that's gaslighting that's literally textbook gaslighting yeah he's gaslighting the fuck out of the media out of the people because that's that's leaving the shit up to imagination it's it's pretty wild i i don't even think anybody really knows what to make of it at this point it's like i don't even know if comey himself does like, does he even know what he's doing at this point? I mean, it's it's such a weird place for an FBI director to end up in this, like... First of all, to be, like, such the center of an election. And then... To have this on... Well, then again, we're just in this totally new era, I guess. So anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. It's not even the water shit that happens. It's just one of the most confusing... Because Comey is, he has an ulterior motive. I just don't know what it is. But, anyway, I'm tired of talking about him. But <laughs> we can talk about a dumbass lawyer who was indicted over his dumbass client. Michael Cohen is what it is? Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> and his dumbass client is Trump. And also, Sean Hannity, apparently. Which was <laughs> kind of fucking funny to find out. Yeah. Yeah, Sean Hannity has been an average supporter or, like, defender of Trump and recently Cohen, ever since the FBI raided his, his office. And recently, a judge ordered Michael Cohen to reveal who his third client was. And Michael Cohen really didn't want to do it. He really tried everything, but he was forced. And he said, like, in all, like, there was a spectacle when it was revealed that it was fucking Sean Hannity. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, like, during that time, Sean Hannity's, like, on the air just talking about how Michael, like, talking about Michael Cohen. And mm-hmm. then never mentioned the fact that he's been his lawyer. Even Fox News wasn't having it. Well, first of all, uh, Sean, I do want to say that I really think that, that you should have disclosed your relationship with uh, Cohen when you talked about him on this show. You could have said just that you yeah, asked him for advice oh, or whatever, but I think it would have been uh, much, much better had you disclosed that relationship. You would understand the nature of it, Professor. I'll yeah. to deal with this later yeah, in the show. I understand. It, it was minimal. I, I put <laughs> you would understand the nature of it. it was well, understand how minimal is it if the, if the judge had to force Cohen to say who it was? Well, I just think that's that funny. He's getting called out and he's minimal. still trying to yeah. move Because he can't, he can't a, lose had to guard. He has to save face. And B, you didn't want the fact that you had spoken to him to be revealed. And you had the right, by the way, not I to have your right. identity I have the revealed. right to privacy. Right. I but, do. you know, it's a... <laughs> it's face <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. I have the right to yeah, privacy. He thinks Complex that the guy's proving his point. Everything else is irrelevant. 
I think so. it was such so, a minor relationship in terms you of have said it had that. to do yeah. with real estate and nothing political. I understand that. I understand that. As far as Comey is concerned. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty polite about it, but he definitely fucking... Yeah. <laughs> it's not cool. It's not cool, Hannity. You're not a cool guy. You never were, but now you're a lot, even a lot less cool. Like, yeah. Because... And then just what it was about, I guess no one really knows for sure. It was, he paid off a woman now. That's. That, that was not Hannity. That was another RNC oh, person. That was the second so it's time. totally a mystery still what yeah, Hannity did. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to come out eventually because. Yeah, it's yeah. out there. Like You're going to find it like, are, are, like fucking New York Times or fucking. Yeah. They're probably getting ready to break it. Like. Yeah. Just <laughs> and then, then Hannity is going to go on like a. Fox vacation. Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back. Uh, this is not bad enough for him to leave fully. He come. Back. I guess it depends on what it is. Yeah, it could change things, but yeah, if it's a me too type of thing, yeah, he's fucked. Especially yeah, because like everybody, every yeah. dude at Fox is because Fox doesn't <laughs> fuck with that anymore. Now if they find now now if they don't want to be linked to the shit, so if if you did if if you if there's even speculation. And they thought they've already talked about it in the past. You're getting fired. You get a vacation and your twenty million dollars. And honestly, that's a good way to go out, though. Meet to somebody and get a fucking free bonus before you leave. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't get sued, like you just got a free twenty million dollars. Actually, like fourteen because of taxes, but shit. But yeah. Um. And then this Michael Cohen thing. I mean. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say like, what you know, what a surprise! This, he has an affinity towards Han like men like Hannity and Trump. <laughs> I just feel like that he just must float to those types of personalities. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's like surprising. It's shocking, but it's also just not at all. It's like yeah. wow. Like this, it feels like somebody's writing this shit. Like it's a fucking TV show. It does. And, okay, still very excited to see what is going to come. What is on these hard drives, these... Because, I mean, what kind of stuff has Cohen done for Trump? Like, you know, the wildest shit has probably not even been touched upon. Like, yeah, because that'll come out P, later. Prostitutes peeing on a, each other. That's I'm, like, I'm tired of hearing about the pee shit, though. I'm just saying, that's like nothing, probably, compared to what's yeah. in there. You yeah. know, like... That's what people are focusing on, but like people care too much about the pee shit. Let he likes getting peed on. Cool, we've talked about it for a fucking year. <laughs> like what the fuck? It's it, it's not worth talking about it for a year and like four months. Like nah, that's too much. There needs are you to sure? be there needs to be other shit that that we could talk about. Like the more Trump shit has come out, that's not even that's, the what, most that's what I'm saying. Trump it's a shit. it's gonna come. Like we. This is, like, last week we said, and that we're quoting the New York Times article, is, like, Trump's thorniest situations, like... No, nah, trust me, Trump is gonna get away with it, because people still care too much about the pee shit, and trying to prove <laughs> that happened, instead of the actual crimes that are in front of them. Like, the pee shit has weathered through a lot of controversy. It's still one of the number one topics. Like, fucking Comey is still referencing that. If you want to pander to anybody, reference the fucking pee tapes. Yeah. Like, true. People love that shit too much. It's like the fucking tabloids, man. You know, actually, I can just see, like, 20 years from now, it just won't be called a golden shower anymore. It'll, like, just be called, like, Trump. a Trump. Yeah. yeah. Give me a Trump. And they'll still be talking about it then. Mm -hmm. Probably still trying to prove that shit. <laughs> anyway, we've been trying to make the show better, and we figured what better way to do it than to have a fucking musical guest. Christian murder scum, they're on giant death factories keeping babies alive. Selling their body parts. The artist formerly known as Alex Jones has gone into a bit of trouble for saying on his performance art show that Sandy Hook never happened. It's been a thing for a minute. Like he he's convinced millions of people that Sandy Hook never happened. And two of the two 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 of the families are suing him for defamation. Well, yeah, so shortly after the Sandy Hook massacre, um, 
Alex Jones started calling it a false flag, which is, you know, pretty much a shtick. Um, and he's been doing so. Like, it, it's still just calling people crisis actors. I've heard things from it never even happened and they were all actors, too. And then apparently he revised that, saying there were actors, but kids definitely did get killed which makes which sense. that yeah that just is not gonna fly because just, no it doesn't make any <laughs> sense why why would they waste money on high actors if they're already gonna kill a bunch of people anyway they've already done the action that they're gonna that they're gonna act out so yeah. why are they still acting out the shit it makes no fucking sense and how does he know this shit and he, he probably explained it to you and shit and you buy some pills when you watch the videos but he, he went on that fucking show and said they physically, I guarantee you, want to assassinate, assassinate my character ahead of setting me up, putting me in prison, or having me killed, which is a bit over, overzealous. Is a bit of an overreaction. Yeah, yeah. But so he's going to court for this, and yeah, that's what he's saying that this is going to end up in him. him either in prison or assassinated. And he started talking about how they assassinated President Kennedy because you know Alex Jones is a Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's that level. Uh, Fucking Alex Jones. You saw the you saw him performing, right? That dude. Yeah, and yeah. so I just wonder because so there is legal precedent now that his show is performance art because he testified for his like I don't know was a child support case or something yeah. like that. So I mean now I feel like it, that's on the record, you know. So like a judge can look at that and be like, well, you're doing the show that's performance art and you're out there just spreading really awful lies that yeah i mean i would i think that could probably fall under defamation uh to the families so how this is going to play out in court should be pretty interesting because i feel like it's just honestly what he's saying now is making him look worse because yeah he's saying like it's a conspiracy theory like which everything is to him apparently. Yeah. But any, you were saying that you think he could pull a Tupac kind of situation. Yeah, that's what I think could also happen here. Is like maybe he's setting himself up for an out. You know, he's ready to like take off to the Cayman Islands, and he is ready to just be dead, assassinated, so that then the conspiracy martyr. theories will really, <laughs> yeah, will like solidify all his conspiracy theories, and yeah, like he, he his placebo a, pills will he just become a martyr, and people will buy his yeah. placebo. Yeah, they'll buy all that shit. Not even would have stuck up like the ghost enough. of Alex Jones placebo pill. Yeah. He'll probably still be like as a hologram, like selling the shit on YouTube. Or he could just they could just play videos that he makes like current day, but they say he recorded before he died, kind of shit. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he was gonna die, so he made a bunch of recordings, but he's still alive, recording the shit in the basement of a Florida home or some shit. <laughs> but what you were saying, or you said like, it, I mean the whole thing like. It's all a conspiracy theory, so, like, if they put out a conspiracy theory, won't there be, like, another conspiracy theory, like, yeah. formed to counter that conspiracy yeah, theory? That, so that, that he's actually alive. <laughs> Cause, yeah, but he just actually will be alive. Yeah. Like. So was, that, that negates the whole conspiracy <laughs> theory thing, and they just know the truth. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. it's... I'm, it gets I get, very meta. My brain hurts now, but... Nah. <laughs> right now, he's gonna... He's gonna conspire... To run off with the money and shit and still sell shit through his, his fucking TV show. So he's going to act like he's dead. And then pe people are going to figure out that maybe he's acting like he's dead. So there's a conspiracy on his, conspir on, on his conspiracy that he's already committed. I don't think I explained it well, but I'm a little bit high, so fuck it. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy for 20. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, fuck Alex Jones. We're going to talk about Starbucks. <laughs> You want to know how wild 2018 is? Starbucks, which is usually known for being a gentrified neighborhood version of a crack dealer, is now in the forefront of U.S. race relations. <laughs> imagine if imagine if your crack dealer was was like trying to negotiate reparations between black and white people. It probably would be a good thing because <laughs> crack dealers know how to negotiate. Yeah. yeah. But now we're talking about a bunch of like... It's a gentrified crack dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about, like, a bunch of uh, girls and their Uggs and... <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Leggings. Yeah. Making your coffee, but... 
Um, actually, like a perfect example of like how that plays out would be that video. Clip. Yeah, we we'll put it up right now. <laughs> um, let me screen record this shit. Why does this? Yeah, with a Starbucks it? logo. <laughs> this Your video was brought coffee. to you by Starbucks. Y'all ready? No free drink, free ready? coffee for black people. This this could be a <laughs> undercover <laughs> advertisement. Shit. How you doing? Good, how are you? All right, I heard y'all was racist, so I came to get my um free coffee. Yo. I saw that. Just let's see your face right there. Like, shit. Uh, I heard y'all was racist, so I came to get my oh um. Right there. <laughs> yeah, she's a little bit shocked. Free coffee? She's like, I am racist? What? Yeah, I heard you guys don't oh, like you yes, guys. Just, so I wanted to get my one right there. He Starbucks drew off reparations again. voucher. What's that? Is that a real thing? It's a real thing. I mean, I'll give it to you. I yeah, I saw that on my Twitter last night. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I need I need a free coffee. <laughs> That's you what I'm talking about. Was? This is justice. Yeah, yeah. This is where we're talking about it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. This is justice. This is crazy. Really? Are you serious? They actually paid reparations in Justice, the form of a fucking coffee. Justice, this is what I'm talking coffee. about. And the best part, get, when you get to the end of the video, you realize service. people fucking want the coffee. He just gives that shit to his son. Yeah, he never that, wanted the like, shit. Absolutely. He just wanted to teach his son a lesson. Could you imagine? You should throw some milk in it. Sure. Never here. No racism uh, in this Starbucks. Oh. They don't even need yeah. to have the training here. Reparations, mm -hmm. man. Got to get my reparations for being black in America. Black Lives Matter. Yo. Black Lives Matter. But do we need flavors in it? We got caramel. Uh, <laughs> I'll take caramel. Is just fucking... <sighs> black Lives Matter. Is that going to make man. it sweet? I feel bad for her. Kind of. Yes. Because now she has to navigate this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fucking bombs that could kill you. But she's a good sport about it. Good. What's your name? I appreciate you. Amanda, Amanda, you are great. I wish you the best. Yeah, yeah. he even fucking won the you coffee. Too. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get your free coffee out here, man. You gotta get your Starbucks. I think he just bought the shit just because fuck it. He was like, yo, you want a treat? <laughs> so yeah. We'll get you some fucking Starbucks. And there it is. Yeah. There's the, the proper transfer of wealth. Mm -hmm. Reparation served. Justice served, Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks is the first. Starbucks is the one to have to deal with this shit. Well, anyway, the reason why this shit is happening is because. Did we talk about it last week? I don't think so, no. Well, previously, a fucking Starbucks manager in Philadelphia called the cops on two black dudes that were just waiting for their friends. Like, as soon as they came in, she called the cops. And the cops came and arrested them and became a whole thing. They actually went on... Oh, Starbucks stock started to drop. Because people, I guess, people found out thought Starbucks was racist or whatever. They started to drop and the, the CEO basically took all the blame. He didn't fire the manager or anything. And the two, the two men went on Good Morning America and explained their side of the story. We're going to put it up now. I was just trying to, you know, process the situation to myself at the time um, because I'm thinking about my family that I have, my community. It didn't really hit me what was going on and it was real until I'm being double locked and my hands behind my back. I want to make sure that in this situation, this situation doesn't happen again. So what I want 
<laughs> Look at that crowd out there. <laughs> he said coffee is black. <laughs> coffee can't even be racist. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, anyway, this shit happened. They lost a bunch of money. The CEO took took the blame. And props to those dudes, though. Like, for how fucking calm can you... Like, they were so calm during the arrest. They're so calm. On, yeah, they, like, they didn't, the want, to, they didn't like, want guns to be pulled out, though. True. Yeah. And basically, the Philadelphia... Um, the, the, the What's the name of, of the person that runs the police department of that? Police chief, yeah, police, police commissioner. The, the police commissioner previously went and said that the people did everything they were supposed to, which I thought they did, because they were called for trespassing. Trespassing, you just have to escort the person out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah, he's, he responded saying that the, like, he took some blame for it, saying that, like, maybe he should have done things differently, but he said, like, the police just did their job, which, you know, I think is fair, but, um... I'm sure a lot of people would disagree. Disagree, yeah. Yeah, I honestly think they just did their job. It's the fucking manager. The manager was being fucking racist. And that's like the one person who just totally got off in the situation. Like basically the CEO of a fucking like multi billion dollar company took the heat for like like yeah. a, a store manager. Yeah. I mean, did he really? Probably. Yeah, he did. Like, do you think he could have just, like, low-key, like, actually fired the person? No, a newspaper would have found Yeah, out. I think so. But still, that's just crazy. Like, I would... Yeah. I just can't imagine that. Like, you work for his company, like, the CEO just is like, ah, oh, you didn't screw up. No, nah, because you remember Starbucks... It's just the society you were raised like, in. You, like, you were telling me that Starbucks has already been trying to do some shit for race relations with their... Oh, yeah, I think it was, like, a year or two ago they did, They had this, like, campaign. It was, like, during kind of the peak of the Black Lives Matter mm. uh, movement. Um, and then they, they did this thing where they were, like, writing, like, something, like, to start a conversation about race on your cup. <laughs> but it just went over horribly. Nobody was... Like, even people that were, like... Because you're having fucking employees write that shit. Exactly, because it was, like... Like, if it was printed on the cups, that would make a lot more sense. Because that way, it's been fucking focus grouped and shit. But you're having a fucking random college kid write some shit on somebody's cup that they just have to think of. Well, yeah, and exactly, like, what... And, and especially, like, you're going to get your cup of coffee in the morning, usually, like, on your way to work or something. Like, I know I'm definitely not down to have a, like, conversation about, about race. U.S. R race relations with my barista. Like, shit, I'll fuck up your like, whole day. I mean, I'm not... No, it's a it's a maybe heavy, it's, I, no, but, it's a heavy ass conversation. Yeah. I don't want to have that conversation <coughs> in the morning. Like it's an important it is an important conversation, but that's uh, some heavy shit. It's like talking about murder first thing in the morning. Like no, yeah, it, nah. I know that murder well, needs to be stopped. Yeah, but nah. Well, yeah, and especially like what you said with it's you know just the barista. Like what are they? They gotta just write something off the top of their head. Like you know, like. I heart black people. They're like, <laughs> fuck the police. <laughs> like, what do you? I don't know. It just seems like there's so much potential for it to just go horribly wrong. Anyway, it was a complete failure, and I think it gets shut down like after a week. His people just were so pissed about it. Nobody was down, and so Starbucks kind of forgot about it now. But now I guess that they're on the spotlight there, which I'm pretty interested. In. So they're closing down all their stores across the country for like four hours today for training. That's a lot of money that, yeah. Yeah. All but I'm, one what manager. I'm wondering is like who, like, did they just get like some like, no, they probably have a, a consult, a consultative firm, a consult and a hey, fuck. I can't say. Yeah, we're talking about thousands of like who can just take up like who's got what kind of consulting firm could have that many people on the ground. I'm saying like no, they they, it, they it, just need somebody to to create the the curriculum. Yeah, or whatever. and then they can just send it to the managers. So the manager that said the racist yeah, but shit. Can you really expect a manager of a Starbucks to like break down like nah, a they, every a every racial company, bias training? Yeah, I don't know. it's. Just, I feel like it's not gonna work out. I feel like it's kind of pointless, but I mean, I yeah. no. Nah, if 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 they give them the right kind of 
like material that's why they're gonna get an outside firm to break this shit down or some a firm that already deals with this kind of shit because it's not like companies haven't had to have racial training. what's i'm saying but do you know who the firm is like nobody i don't, I don't know, know maybe it's out there but it just seems like that's putting a lot on like a a consultant or a firm to just i don't know to me it seems like they would have to be like oh, it's going to be part of like a like it's like in your employee handbook and like you have to like read this and like sign off on it before you start and then like maybe every year like reread like to me i don't know it just seems like like working like working it into like their actual employee process like rather than just saying like oh we're gonna have like somebody train no but the, the thing is they're not just day. they're training know. on unconscious like bias so they're gonna try and, and get you to notice when you're profiling somebody so basically that's why it's gonna be four hours it's gonna take a lot of time to teach you that kind of shit so i i don't even know it might work it might not but anyway work for their stock prices is that yeah. shit is bounced back yeah and i think honestly is a good way for them for them to handle this shit because they could have gone fucking papa john's kind of route where you fucking spaz out because people are kneeling and shit yeah or you could like embrace the criticism and fucking change even though i don't think it's necessarily like aimed at the right person like the ceo is doing what the ceo does if one person in your organization fucks up you're supposed to take the blame because you're the head that's just how it is yeah that's what you're paid for well okay again just to make my point though like think about every day they probably people get hired and fired at starbucks Mm -hmm. like probably like a bunch of new people are gonna get hired tomorrow yeah fired tomorrow so like and it was part of your training it, it's going to be it part of the training. probably be part of your training. Yeah. Also, I'm saying, that's what I think would be, that's what I think should happen is like, if they're going to do a training, it should just be part of like an ongoing yeah, they, training. It should just but be the this reason they're doing thing, this, like, but, they're doing this one time thing is for the people who have already been hired and trained. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess so. And yeah. like, as an actual response. Yeah. Just to make yeah. sure like, everybody gets the training. So new people will get the training. So if you fire, if you got fired yesterday, shit, you don't have to deal with that. But, but also, it's just a fucking Starbucks. Like, again, I don't know, I'm not trying to just like talk shit. Like, it's not worthwhile. But like, just feel like this is not the biggest issue in America. It isn't. Yeah. Uh, well, it's 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 a scape. It's a scape. Starbucks is a scapegoat right now. So. Well, I mean, I just feel like it's though. It's like a. It's like such a small. It's like okay, so this is a problem. Like Starbucks is basically saying like it wasn't uh, a racist. Uh, manager like it's a societal problem and that's why we need to respond in this way and get everybody mm-hmm. thinking this but way it was a racist manager though yeah yeah that's what i'm saying and then like but then if it's a societal problem like so just like addressing it within starbucks what is that gonna do like that, but that's all they can do yeah true like they can't fix they literally can't fix american race relations well, I guess they did try with their little right on the cup thing. Yeah, well, that shit didn't work. <laughs> that shit was flawed from the start. It was just too ambitious a project. <laughs> Fucking race relations. <laughs> you willingly want to do that. Shit. Anyway, shit, that's our show.